Hello, hello. This is Sebastian Moyapasa from Tucson, Arizona, United States. And this time we're going to talk about uh, how to recognize uh, secondary enrichment in the profit copper systems. And we already said in the profit copper systems there are two types of uh, process of mineralization. One is the primary mineralization, and the second process is the supergene process or secondary mineralization. So for the primary mineralization, it's like this, you know, everything yellow, calcopyrite, um, copper, iron sulfide, and pyrite, uh, copper, uh, sorry, iron sulfide, <laughs> okay? And the other one is very important in the perfect copper system, is molybdenite. You can see the, the veinlet yeah, over there. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll move like this. All the, the veinlet over there. You know, that's very nice. And I'll put it again. That's uh, the vein. Molybdenite. So let's go straight to, to the super gene mineralization the super gene enrichment mineralization. And so we have um, this uh, chart. It's going to be from the west to the east. And we have a, a, this is a section looking to the north. So we have a 500, the scale, graphic scale. It could be meters or feet is the same. So we can have like 5,000 feet or five kilometers is the same vertical, maybe three uh, kilometers and 3,000 feet if we want to see in feet. And uh, for the people that they, is, is not, uh, you know, familiarized with the cross sections, uh, let's imagine this is a cake. And uh, so we cut it, and this is our face, right? And we have one layer, two layers, three layers, four layers of the cake. And of course, this is the air. So in this uh, super gene uh, copper mineralization process uh, exists uh, three agents uh, of uh, erosion and one of the agents of the erosion is the sunlight so sunlight do, during the day you know heat expands the minerals expand the materials and during the night cold uh, compress or you know makes it smaller it expand get it smaller expand expand okay one point in time destroys the mineral, destroys the rock. And uh, that's the work of the sunlight. The second one is the wind. So it's been destroyed, it moves a little bit here and there. And the third, uh, third agent, very important, is meteoric water. So every season, every year, when the rain uh, comes, you know, it has uh, this uh, already broken and destroyed uh, sulfide. And what happens with the uh, uh, oxygen meets iron? Oxidize, right? And uh, when oxygen meets uh, sulfur, it's uh, going to start to make a sulfuric acid, sulfuric, uh, um, sulfur uh, acid. So, and, uh, and it's going to go deeper and the deeper vertically. And we are going to have something we call leached cap sun. And in this one, we are going to have, <coughs> sorry, iron oxide, gerocide, hematite, and goitite. And we are going to see rocks like this. So this is a fracture. One point in time, there was uh, sulfites in here, not anymore. Everything is a, a hematite, iron oxide. We see the other side. There's no sulfites. Everything is iron oxide. And that's the leach cap zone. And the next one, if the wa water, you know, takes the copper sulfide deeper, we are gonna find a copper oxide zone, which actually we have copper sulfates. You know, copper sulfide is like this, right? Uh, we saw in, in the previous video, you know, all the blue copper sulfide. And once again, we have iron oxide, but we don't see any pyrite or carcopyrite, so everything uh, already has been uh, replaced. Okay, that's the copper oxide zone. And then we show up the, uh, this area with uh, uh, enrichment 
so on, or calcosite, blanket. So in this area, that's where it started to show up. You know, we have uh, some pyrite in here and all the dark black or dark gray, it's calcosite. We have calcosite, we have pyrite, and in uh, some cases we have um, uh, calcopyrite. So, and uh, uh, goes deeper and deeper in some places we don't want to find like this, you know, everything, pyrite, calcopyrite, in between the spaces replace calcosite over the uh, 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 pyrite and uh, calcopyrite. So it, that's uh, how, why and how we call replacement, because it's replacing uh, the uh, iron minerals in these uh, uh, sulfites. Um, and this is in the other one, other one like this. I think uh, this is very nice. And we have, uh, you know, uh, calcosite, but in some places it's still we can see, you know, the pyrite and yeah, probably like 30, 40 percent of replacement is calcosite. We talk about the replacement and so another one, let's see other one. Uh, I think we see, we see that this one, right? And calcosite and then probably 70, 80% of replacement of uh, the pyrite, it's got some pyrite. And then uh, we go other areas like this, calcosite, and we have uh, some little bit of uh, um, Calcopyrite, pyrite, but it's that enrichment. So, in the water or copper sulfide is still going down, and somewhere in like this, we are going to find you know veins, uh, quartz sulfide veins, and it has been replaced. And we can see uh, calcopyrite, and this calcopyrite has been replaced with calcoside and cobalite also sometimes diginite and uh, that's how we are going to see it, you know all this yeah, very nice it's a vein you know if we cut up this it's still going to be a vein in there very nice so in some other places we have this massive uh, calcosite uh, some some people call glancy calcosite you know very bright and uh, massive calcosite in there and uh, so we still we still in this uh, uh, calcosite blanket or enrichment why do they call at the beginning 60s 70s so that the, the name come from because it looks like a blanket right that's the reason they call it at the beginning that's how they thought and um so finally we have this line and it says uh, but what is this line? This line is the limit of uh, the underground water, or water table or water, at the beginning of the rain season. So this is the bottom bottom. It cannot go lower, right? So if it does not go lower, so all the primary minerals, pyrite, calcopyrite, and molybdenum will be there. So all this minerals like this is going to be there, right? Uh, we have uh, uh, pyrite, calcopyrite, and molybdenite. So all this is the primary mineralization. So why we call primary? Because that's the original mineralization, maybe 60, 70, 80 million years ago. And this is in the super gene uh, process that's getting into the primary and this this process maybe it's only the last two or three maybe 10 million years ago right but primary mineralization is way much older and with that i think we cover also at the same time <laughs> primary mineralization and something very important thing that i, I want to add to this, uh, to this um, secondary enrichment process, that something very important is faults, geological faults. Uh, the this district scale 
faults that uh, is uh, going to be post mineral or post secondary mineralization. So faults is going to be very important because if we have a fault, it, most of the time has a fault gauge zone and one side is going to enrich more than the other. So that's why very important. The other one is alteration. Alteration is something that happens in the, in the primary uh, primary mineralization or alteration, in this case, silicification is very important because it, we can have an areas with enrichment, but the center, everything is uh, silicified. It's going, if it's not uh, broken, it's very difficult for uh, a copper uh, sulfate to enter inside of uh, this silicification zones and make the replacement. So you will have uh, zones with uh, enrichment, but in the center, in some areas, you know, some spotted big areas will you'll have a primary immunization. And the next one, it's a very important also, is the rock types. In this ideal uh, um, uh, graphic, we think everything is the same rock. But what happens is you have a sedimentary rocks, you know, like limestone, or you have a, a lime in silstone, so you have a, um, andesite. And the side, it's a, one of the minerals that you know has a lot is a calcium uh, feldspar. It's calcium feldspar makes uh, you know calcium. So if you have some acid, will react with the uh, copper sulfate that is generating the surface. So in the graphic will be different. Okay. So all those uh, three things. Uh, uh, structures, alteration, and rock type you need to consider in this secondary uh, enrichment mineralization for your deposit. Not all of them has, not, uh, not uh, all the places has. The other thing in this case we are considering a calcocyte as a secondary enrichment, but there are places, at least one of them, that I know there is calcocyte on the primary mineralization too. So that's the other thing that maybe we can talk about. In some cases, not not always. Okay, thank you very much. I hope it helped you a lot. Uh, you know, some questions you have, and uh, with this, I think we covered, in, including the primary copper mineralization and the other things. In primary mineralization, we need to talk about this um, uh, banglets type. You know, they call A, B, C, D, and different type of uh, banglets, how to recognize, how to describe, how to map. Maybe we can talk about it. Write down uh, in, the, in the comments if you want. If you don't want, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much and have a good day or good evening, whatever it is uh, over there. And I hope you enjoyed. Have an uh, outstanding morning, afternoon, or night. And uh, subscribe and touch the bell for the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.